let's write down a uh, little library of functions. This is going to be important. So these are the functions that you should know. They should come immediately from your brain, right away. Um, x squared, you should know what the graph looks like. Um, square root of x, you should know what the graph looks like. x cubed, um, you should also know what the um, the exponential function looks like. Let's do y equals. Okay, and what other ones? Obviously, the, um, the equation of a line, but um, I won't do that one. Um, uh, the trig functions, you should know how to graph, um, but I won't put them on here. If I think of another one, I'll put it on here. I guess you need to know what the um, logarithmic function looks like. So this is the natural log. Okay, so let's graph these real quick, just the basic ones. Okay, so um, x squared, um, well, that's just your basic parabola. Um, square root of x looks like a shooting rocket. x cubed looks kind of like a s thingy, sort of. And now this one there, uh, this is the exponential function. Um, this guy... looks like it's going, it's increasing if um, a is greater than 1 and right here it's the y-intercept is at b but then it's um, decreasing it has a horizontal asymptote on both it's decreasing if a is between 0 and 1 Okay, and then the natural log function looks like this, and it crosses over at 1. Sorry about that. <clears throat> okay, so that's your um, library of functions. Now, let's talk a little bit about inverses, just, um, just visually. Um, the inverse of a function... So here the function, usually you think of it this way, um, the x is the um, input and the y is the output. And so you plug in, for example, here I plug in, um, you know, let's say uh, 9 and the output is going to be 3 because square root of 9 is equal to 3. Well, the inverse function does exactly the opposite. The inverse function, you plug in the output and it'll tell you the input. So for example, the inverse of square root of x, you plug in 3 into the inverse and the inverse function will spit out 9. So the inputs and the outputs are reversed. So that means that the, so this is important, so for the domain domains and ranges of functions and their inverse are switched. Okay, so basically what that means is that if you know the domain of um, a function then that means you know the range of its inverse and vice versa. Okay, so let's do an example of find, actually finding the inverse function. Um, well, okay, one more thing. Not every function has an inverse. And remember that the requirement for a function to have an inverse is that every output is only allowed to correspond to one input. So here, for example, um, this function, let's say right here, is uh, y equals 4. Notice that y equals 4 can come from two different inputs. It can come either from positive 2 
or negative 2. That means this guy, this function, y equals um, x squared, is not 1 to 1, and it does not have an inverse. And this is where the horizontal line test comes from. If you can pass a horizontal line through your function and it only hits once, then it's going to have an inverse. So for example, here this, um, let me do it with a pencil better. Um, this function, square root of x, notice that if I pass horizontal lines through here, it's only going to hit uh, once. So that's how many times it's allowed to hit my function, either zero times or one time. So this function is one to one. This one, if you pass a horizontal line, it's going to hit twice. So that's why it's not one to one. X cubed is natural log of x is, and the exponential functions are as well. Okay, so now, so let's do an example of finding the inverse. Um, so the problem of finding the inverse boils down to then um, a simple situation. All you need to do is, um, so let's do an example. Let's say I have uh, the square root of 2x minus 3. Okay, now if I find the domain, you don't really have to do this, but um, so let's say you want to find the inverse. All right, so this we're going to make this a several part question. So let's say you want to find the inverse. Uh, you want to find the domain and the range. And domain and range of the original get how to write and domain and range of the inverse okay now um, we didn't really quite talk about the range that much but the range is just the all the um, outputs the corresponding outputs and um, there's no sort of algebraic way to find the range like there is for the domain um, you just kind of have to know what the um, what the function looks like. But we might be able to come up with a different way right now. So um, to find the inverse function, um, what it boils down to is you're going to solve for the input, basically. Or in other words, x. And when we solve for the input, or x, um, this is going to, um, and then the rest of the um, the steps just involve, I guess, uh, I'm losing my words, just involve uh, notation changes. Okay, so um, let's change f of x into, let's change it to y. So let's write it as y equals square root of 2x minus 3. Okay, now, first of all, we know that this function has an inverse because we know that it's the square root function, and it looks like um, the rocket that we had earlier. And we can also find the domain of this guy. Um, the domain of the original function is, um, if you do all the work, you'll see that it goes from um, 3 halves all the way up to infinity. So I showed you guys how to do this in the previous problem, so I, I'm not going to do all the steps for that one. Okay, so now, um, basically all we're doing is solving for x. So to get rid of the square root, we're going to square both sides. So we have y squared equals 2x minus 3. And then to solve for x, so we're going to get x equals y squared plus 3 all over 2. Okay. 
and then um, what we do is we we change the we switch the variables so we change the x's to y's and the y's to x's so this is going to be the inverse function and so then all you've got to do is um, change it from y to f inverse this is the notation for f f inverse of x is x squared plus 3 over 2. Okay, and so this means, so I have the um, domain of this guy, and so that means that I also have the um, the range of the inverse. The range of the inverse, remember, is the same as the domain of the original function. So the range is going to be, the range of the inverse is, let's write this down. So the original, and let's say this is the inverse. Okay, so the range of the inverse is going to be from 3 halves to infinity. Okay, now the, the range of the um, original function is, well, we know what this guy looks like. Uh, this guy looks like a, uh, a rocket, and it's you know something like something like that so we know that it goes from all the way from uh, zero up to infinity sorry parentheses so that means that the domain of the inverse function is going from zero to infinity as well so these are switched Okay. All right. So um, that's that for uh, the inverse functions. And so this is how you find the inverse for any function. Just step one: solve for x, uh, switch x's with y's, and change the notation. And that's it. Okay. So let's do a couple of uh, function composition. Composition. This is when you plug in a uh, a function into another function. So here, let's first uh, talk about the notation. Um, the composition symbol looks like a little, a small uh, little o. Um, and so what this means is, um, it's telling you to plug g into f. So this is really f of g of X. So all this says is grab the second function, plug it into the first one. So let's say, for example, we have um, a function f of x equals, you know, I don't know, uh, 3 over x, and g of x is equal to the square root of x minus 1. And so then um, that means that if I want to uh, find the composition f of g of x, well, this means that I'm looking for, let's write it down in this notation. So this means that I'm looking for f of whatever g of x is, which is square root of x minus 1. And so then this tells me plug in square root of x minus 1 into every x and f. So this is going to be 3 over, instead of x, I'm going to put square root of x minus 1. And that's it. Okay, so then uh, I can also do goff. Goff, goff, is just the same thing but backwards. This tells me plug f inside of g. So this tells me, okay, well, uh, f, which is 3 over x, plug that into every x inside of g. So then what I do is I go, okay, so then I have g which is square root but instead of x I'm gonna put 3 over x and then minus 1 and you can simplify that as well but we'll just leave it like that just to understand the idea